Hey everybody, and uh, welcome back to the shop. Uh, I want to take a minute just in the beginning just to say thanks to everyone who's watched the videos I've made so far. I really do appreciate the support. Um, you know, small time maker here. Um, so, you know, it's kind of cool to see uh, people checking out the videos. I hope they're useful, um, especially the, uh, the, you know, the uh, reviews of machinery, which I'll hopefully I'll do a few more here in the future. Um, I've been pretty busy lately uh, working on getting ready for CNC. So I've kind of, uh, you know, assess what the market is, and it seems there's a lot of people in my area, at least, that are doing similar type products to what I'm doing. So I've been looking for ways to expand, I guess, in some way, and also make a repeatable product that I can maybe sell wholesale to um, local stores, that sort of thing. Um, so did a lot of researching, um, ended up deciding on the uh, CNC uh, Long Mill, which is based in Ontario, Canada. I'm in the eastern side of Canada, so it's kind of good that I don't have to worry about uh, shipping duties, so on. Um, so the first big part of that step is uh, obviously choosing to order that. So I did a lot of research, watched many, many YouTube videos, um, ended up deciding on the uh, long mill, probably because of features versus price. Uh, there's a lot of choice out there. Um, this one's made for me locally in Canada, which is a big plus. Um, it's kind of a do-it-yourself. These guys are like startup guys, which I really like. You know, it's kind of cool seeing people follow their dreams, starting a company from scratch. Kind of cool to be able to support them, um, so I'm pretty stoked about that part of it. Um, yeah, and the other, of course, being price. So all told, you know, starting set of bits, uh, most main features. I think the actual CNC is going to be around 2K. Is what it'll come in at. Um, on top of that, I had to buy a router that it uses it, which is the Makita router, the typical trim Makita router, the small handheld. It runs on that router, so I had to buy the router. Uh, and then the other big cost is building a table. So that's kind of where I'm at now. That I don't have the mill yet. It's on its way. It's in shipping. So I'm currently working on building a table for it to be on. So I've already built the 4x4 table, topped it with MDF. Um, so now the next steps are kind of taking that, I uh, put on some T-Track, putting on some MDF spoil boards in between, which the CNC will use to surf those and level them off. Um, basically prepping for this CNC coming later this week. So that's kind of where we're at in the shop. I'll show you where I've done so far. Thanks. Okay. So here's where I'm at so far. Um, hopefully uh, I can keep this reasonably steady. That's not gonna make anybody sick to their stomach. Um, so I've got basically ahead of me here a four foot by four foot table, um, constructed out of two by fours, as you can see. Um, so basically what I've done to stabilize it, of course it's cross brace underneath. Um, as part of running the CNC, I'm going to dedicate a vacuum to it. So I've got, as you can see below here, a shop vac. Now the shop back I actually have hung out in under the frame of the uh, table. And the reason for that is that when I want to pull the table out, I don't have to worry about the vacuum getting stuck underneath. So I thought it'd be simpler just to sort of hang it out of the frame. Um, the vacuum is wired to just an AC switch here. And then from that switch obviously runs to the wall. And that's so I don't have to reach in to uh, turn the vacuum on. So it's just a simple vacuum comes on, vacuum goes off. Pretty straightforward. Um, Next, we've got a small box here on the side, which I actually have uh, mounted a small computer inside of. So you got like a, just a small PC, which I found online pretty reasonably pricing, it's $200 for a simple uh, PC. I'm actually a Mac guy, so I didn't actually have a PC to use for to run the CNC, so I had to buy this. Uh, the little box I actually made with a couple of cabinet doors, which I had laying around painted black. So that's in there. Got a keyboard and mouse. Pretty high tech stuff, I know, very impressive. And yeah, so the table. So basically, uh, for myself, I had to go with 11 sixteenths MDF because I didn't have any three quarter available uh, at the local store where I buy the uh, wholesale store. So I've got a basically a four foot by four foot sheet on the bottom, T track mounted on top of that, so the T track's already hooked down. And then in between that, I've got these boards that fit. These actually are seven inch uh, boards here. And then some larger on the side. So the actual long mill is 30 inches by 30 inches. So it'll kind of go over these spoil boards into this other section over here. Um, these guys will be flattened by the CNC to be flat to it and it'll actually kind of come over. You can use these with tie downs to hold everything down. So right now I'm in the process of countersinking, try to zoom in here a little, countersinking in these holes so I can actually mount the screws so I don't have to worry about the CNC accidentally hitting the screw. So I'm sinking these heads down in and to do that I actually had to go out sadly and buy uh, this kind of like drill press job which I actually kind of wanted one for a while 
because um, it'll be handy for doing uh, some other stuff that I had kind of in, in mind. So it'll probably be handy overall. So I'm using that base so I can get a nice 90 degree straight hole down into here. Uh, put on the mounting screws and uh, yeah, makes full works. And the other addition to that is I had a, a cheaper TV, old RCA television sitting in, in my basement. So, you know, to me, that's a perfect one to, to use for something like this. The good thing being is I can uh, even, you know, watch YouTube out here if I'm not running a CNC program. So cheap television actually had the arm for it and everything already just sitting in storage. So it all worked out pretty well that I just happened to have things laying around. Um, the vacuum I have going directly to hose here. So once the CNC comes in, I'll have to mount some kind of an arm up over that, I'm assuming, to uh, support it. Um, yeah, and that's kind of where we're at. So we'll kind of drill a few of these holes out here. So what we've got here basically is this essentially a handheld drill press. <laughs> going to basically go down uh, basically the depth of the bit um, just to get enough that I won't have to worry about the uh, CNC ever rubbing into those screws which would probably be bad news for the bits. <laughs> Admittedly it cuts a lot slower than I thought it would too. I think this MDF would be pretty quick to get through. Okay, uh, yeah, so tabletop is uh, down now, permanently. Um, so the goal of this is basically, uh, I had to research this, I'm sure as if you're watching this video, maybe you're doing the same thing. Um, the purpose of this, so 11 16th, we'll just say three quarter, because it'll make it easier probably. Three quarter piece of MDF basically becomes a permanent tabletop. So that one's hooked down to the frame, the two by four frame below. Um, I should mention I have adjustable feet on the bottom of this as well because, you know, 2 by 4 is tough to make it a really uh, good table, especially on concrete that may not be perfectly level, so this way I can kind of level the table off. Uh, then on top of that, uh, I mounted the T-Track, so I, I basically, you know, decided how I wanted it to be. The long mill has a 30 inch by 30 inch deep uh, working area, um, so the majority of the work is going to be done. I can't imagine that I'll be doing a lot of 30 inch by 30 inch pieces, maybe a sign for myself probably would be only going to be that big. Um, but most things I'm assuming will be 24 and down. I mean, I have a 13 inch planer, so I'm not doing huge pieces uh, typically. Um, so yeah, T-tracks are mounted down. Now this will allow me to slide uh, clamps in to hold pieces down as they're going through the mill. In between that, uh, I have seven inch wide pieces of MDF running front to back. And then on the ends here, I can't even remember what it worked out. I think they're maybe like 12, 13 inch pieces. These will pretty much remain always um, because they're not going to take a lot of abuse. These three center ones are basically designed to take a hit. So screws are sunk down low enough that I don't have to worry about it. Once the mill is sitting on top of the surface, I will then flatten the actual all the reach area basically of the mill. And that will chop down into my MDF, you know, by hopefully only a millimeter or so. But that'll make it level to the mill as it is on the table. That way whatever I put in there afterwards will all cut low. As time goes on, as these boards take a beating, take out the few screws I have on, I think I've got, what, eight screws, 10 screws on there. Pull the 10 screws, throw that piece out, another, I'll just replace all three, another three spoiled boards go in, resurface the whole area a second time, you know, and back to work. So these will always be getting uh, beat up and replaced, which is fine. Better that. So the T-Track, hopefully you can tell from the camera, I don't know if the angle is good enough, but T-Track is only about half, half depth. So I've got lots of room that I don't have to worry. I should be able to surface these a couple of times. I'm doing a millimeter each time that I should be more than fine. Um, so basically at this point, short of having the mill, I think I'm basically ready to go. So to recap here, um, had to buy a cheap PC 
Um, found one on, I guess it was Newegg. It's like a business type of uh, small form factor computer. I think that was $200 to my door. Um, for TV, I had a monitor arm I actually had as well. I had to buy a keyboard mouse, 20 bucks probably Amazon. Um, two by fours, 60 bucks I think, because they actually did come down in price here locally, which is great. Um, MDF, I believe was $65, now I think that's wholesale, so I think if you went to uh, you know one of the bigger box hardware stores, it's, I think it's close to $80, $85 for three quarter MDF as of today. Uh, it feels like they, they don't even, uh, one of my local stores don't even put prices on plywood anymore because the price fluctuates so bad. Um, you have to ask for every single time. T-Tracks, I think, were, you know, $20 and change, probably. Again, Amazon, um, you know, simple things. Uh, Hose stands on. Vacuum I already had, so shop vac. I actually have a couple in here, so I can give one away for this project. Now, I have central uh, dust collection in here as well that I installed uh, last year, which I'll do a little video on uh, as we kind of go along. Um, so I could have probably connected it. I just find at the distance it's on the opposite side of my garage, which isn't a massive garage, but it's long enough that it's going to lose so much power and I'll have to run all this orange line across my ceiling. It really doesn't feel like it's worth a lot. Uh, where I have the shop vac, um, the dust boot coming off of the uh, mill is going to be a four and a half, or sorry, two and a half inch hose. I've got two and a half inch hose. It's two and a half for the vacuum. It all kind of works. So I just think it'll make a lot of things easier. The only thing left I really need left for the tables, I have to use, I have to get some kind of an arm to get this hose up, other than hanging off the TV, which I really don't want to do. Um, I play in bands, so I actually had the idea of maybe using a, a mic stand boom arm, mounting it to the back, and that way it could actually kind of rotate and allow. So I'm going to try to look around, see if I can find an older mic stand, maybe from one of my friends, Wink Wink, if anybody's watching. Um, I'd rather not use a new mic stand for this in case it doesn't work out, I hate to cut it up. Uh, so yeah, so basically the next things will be, um, Midweek this week, I should be getting the long mill. So probably the next video that will come out after this one will be uh, the unboxing and the setup of that, which I'm assuming will take me a few evenings because, again, I have a day job. This is my part-time gig. Uh, so I'll only work on it in the evenings. Um, yeah, so I'm pretty excited. I, I mean, I'm very new to seeing seeing other than the research I've done online. I'm sure many people watching this be in the same boat. That's why you're doing it. You know, you're doing the same as we all do. We research and, you know, try to find ways to uh, make things better. Um, anyway, thanks for this. Is a pretty short video, I know. Uh, I really appreciate you guys tuning in. Um, as a small maker, I mean, it's one of those things you do these things and you think, will anybody even watch these? And so it's uh, it really does mean a lot when people uh, check videos out. It means a lot when you comment too. I I'll, uh, I reply to every comment. So if you have any questions, if I don't explain something properly, feel free to to tack down a question. I'd be happy to answer it. Uh, anything you want to know about detail wise on the table build, why I chose that mill. Um, anything else I can even uh, send you towards some videos to help explain stuff if that helps. Um, otherwise, yeah, please subscribe if you like the stuff, the content, and you want to follow along as I build this mill. I'm going to do a few more tour reviews here of the things I have in the shop. Uh, and then hopefully, uh, we'll, at some point, <laughs> hopefully not too far away, we'll have some uh, cool CNC videos start to go up too, with it, uh, of, you know, making some signage and making some kind of cool things. So uh, here's hoping it all goes well. Anyway, thanks for watching. Have a great day.